you know, sometimes you love a game. It's part of your childhood. It formed a lot of your memories growing up. You enjoy it. You even start in the future maybe thinking of starting a YouTube series about it, where you look at the things you love most about the game, the artwork, and you review it. And for a little while it goes well, because you think, yeah, you know, these are all pretty good. And then you get to one. You get to one that makes you think, why? Why does this exist? Who thought it'd be a good idea? And in those times, well, those times, you turn back to some old friends, and you think, yep, goodbye. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Gallery. My name is Nuke, and this is Craft of the Cards. This is a series fundamentally focused on grading the art of Yu-Gi-Oh! Cards, looking at the aesthetics of the art, how it syncs up to the effect, and how it relates to the card's name. We grade the cards out of 10, with 10 being an artistic masterpiece and 1 being a waste of cardboard and man hours. This time, we'll be looking at a bad archetype. Th this one's... This one's pretty bad, guys. It's Ally of Justice. Being from the Dual Terminal storyline, progenitor of some of the best artwork in the game, and some of its stupidest, this archetype falls squarely in the terrible side of the equation, with no real consistent theming in the cards and a lack of interesting or really coherent designs. And so, without further ado, let's put on some sewage gear to wade through this dross and take a look at Allies of Justice. That being said, their first card, Ally of Justice Unlimiter, is actually pretty good. This and very few other cards set out the aesthetic of the Ally of Justice monsters, and the thing that makes them really unique, rather than just being block colors. Being smooth curves contrasted with sharp spikes, uh, with an interesting color palette. The coloration on this one is, however, a little different though. This does match with the aesthetics, but not the color scheme. The Ally of Justice monsters usually, at least in an ideal world, go for a white and gold color scheme with black undertones, which really help to bring it out and maybe some red here and there to pop out and have a bit of highlight. This one though goes for a dark purple and gold color, which while working quite well doesn't really get to the level that I, I would want from an Ally of Justice monster. It looks alien though. The design is really good, with a spike down the front representing a proboscis of some kind and a bugged out eyes, giving an extremely non human appearance. The scrawled AOJ on the side though is a bit strange. It clearly stands for Ally of Justice, but it looks like graffiti, and that really annoys me because these cards should be sleek alien monsters, not looking like some vandal kid decided to take a, a can of spray paint to them. In any case, the background is really good, being a very cosmic looking background, and the name and effect actually do work well together, the unlimiting meaning a massive boost to an ally of justice monster, and a possible allusion to the card limiter removal. It is quite a good card though, it gets a 5 out of 10, that's the most I can give it, it has a really good element, but its color scheme doesn't match with what should be the ally of justice color scheme, so in the end it's merely average, and trust me, when you consider the grades I give to a lot of these other cards, they'll wish they had been this good. The next card though is also pretty decent, and if the rest of the archetype was like Ally of Justice Core Destroyer, I'd be complaining about worms instead, or probably Nordics. It's clearly based off a horse or something similar, but I do love how the tail looks. It flows from the smoothness of the body so naturally, and the black contrasts excellently with the white and matches extremely well with the gold. The glowing blue elements are good as well, not taking up too much of the card, but making it seem like something alien and constructed, not something of organic origin or even armored up in like organic organic would be. It's excellent, the design is good, the background is excellent, and the effect is… okay. It ties into one of the major themes that does run through the archetype, and does help it in a sense. That being, they are monsters specifically set up to counter the worms, as in the lore, which are all light based, so their effects either revolve around destroying flip effect monsters, which is worms, or countering light monsters. While this is a good thing for the archetype as a whole, there are other elements of the other cards which make me want to murder them instead. But, in any case, this card is really good. It gets a 7 out of 10. It is an excellent card all around. It has a good, engaging color scheme, a sleek, interesting design, and the effect, while not great, matches well enough with the overall theme of the archetype. 
Ally of Justice Cycle Reader is their next card, and it's where they start to drop off just a tad. This one's still decent, with a good design that reflects the white and gold coloration that comes with some of the other monsters. The black and red work well additionally, helping to add some really nice looking contrast to the rest of the card, and works well with a weird spider looking mech with the spikes and singular red eye on the faceplate. I am really glad they didn't go with eight eyes, though I feel like it would have made it too overtly animalistic, and while this is quite analytic, it's quite obviously a spider, this more detached view of organic life makes for interesting design and art. The background is once again pretty decent, the swirling cosmos in the background uh, being a pretty nice backdrop to the card as a whole, helping to reinforce its alien nature, the fact that these cards were developed coming from space. The effect is quite good as well, allowing you to cycle this into your grave in order to banish two light monsters, matching with the cycle part of its own name. This card also gets a 6 out of 10. Its art is decent enough, with a decent background, but a nice link between the affected name brings it up to, well, above average. Ally of Justice Unknown Crusher is where they lose me. Seriously. I'm gone now, just like that one damn pen you could swear was in your backpack somewhere. In any case, this card is, is terrible. It takes all the illusion to Earth-based life out of it and just makes it a robot elephant with a laser trunk. While that design concept in and of itself is pretty cool, there's no thematic reason why it would be the rest of the archetype. It has much more in common with Mammoth Graveyard than anything else. While this might be a retrain of for some godforsaken reason, instead of just folding it into a fossil archetype like it should have, it lacked any real cohesive elements with the rest of the archetype, the plain steel gray of the card being broken up by the blue tube-like trunk while, which, while a nice design element, are woefully strange on cards that were previously all white and gold, with only brief elements of blue or red to highlight them. It looks weird on the lineup, especially given its accuracy to a mammoth, lacking the stylization that make the other cards separate from organic life and therefore interesting. The background is boring but functional, and the effect makes little sense. The crusher part makes sense, destroying a light monster, but the unknown part doesn't. I don't really get what about this card is unknown, what the worms might be that's unknown, but in the end, this card gets uh, a 3 out of 10. It has good elements in it, but it lacks a thematic connection with the rest of the archetype, and the fact that this might be a retrain of Mammoth Graveyard of all things is just baffling. Yeah, it, it's pretty solidly subtle. Ally of Justice Searcher is also super weird. The design matches well with the effect in a sense, but at the same time, it lacks any connection to the rest of the archetype. And while its effect would be excellent on another card, or just with the Japanese name instead of the TCG translation, it just kinda sucks. The color is strange for one, again, sacrificing the red and gold to go with this weird green and gold, which would be a perfectly acceptable card to do, if not for previous precedent. I like the helmet looking design, at least. It looks kind of like a Spartan helmet, which is pretty cool, but it, it's very small comfort, and the name makes no sense with the effect, and works much better with the lore when you consider the Japanese lore. In the lore, this card is part of a period when the races were starting to collect samples of the worm to fight them, and its name is subsequently Ally of Justice Researcher in Japan, which makes sense, because it's showing how it's using its arm to examine flip down defense monsters, which is what worms usually are, and the arms and the art there ma therefore make sense, so it would work, at least, and bring it up slightly. This one is called Ally of Justice Searcher, and it doesn't do the one thing that someone could reasonably expect of a callback and search out monsters from your deck. Ugh. Additionally, there's also another really terribly drawn AOJ on the side, which just messes with the aesthetic in its entire- I don't know why it's there. It gets 2 out of 10. It's got some decent enough art, but it lacks in theme and clarity when compared to the others, and it would have been so easy to make it make sense. It doesn't- it, it doesn't make sense. But it would have been so easy to. So yeah, uh, Ally of Justice Cyclone Reader is their next card. It's also quite strange. It has a good design, but it's divorced from the aesthetic sensibilities of the other cards. Once again, it's red and black look good together, but normally uh, it should have been high. It doesn't match the rest of the aesthetic. These should be highlights rather than primary colors. The background in this one is decent though, and the effects are pretty good all things considered, and the effect is good, but this can't get more than a 3 out of 10 again. It's a really nice card, but it's brought down by its lack of connection with anything from the other archetypes. It just... they should be 
artistically cohesive. I'm not demanding that they all have the same color scheme either. I just want a reason, and this has no reason to be different. Ally of Justice Guard Hulk. Also, it's... This is just bad. It's art blurry, it's out of focus with fairly boring mech design and no shared elements with the rest of the card. Its background is blurry and dark as well, being, like, good only by contrast to the red armor. It's an incredibly minor attack boost when it attacks, which matches with the art having two swords, but this card, once again, it, this is bad on a unique level. Though. This is bad because it has no thematic connection to the rest of the archetype, but it's also bad because its art is blurry and out of focus, and it, it just looks divorced even aesthetically to the like on a, on a fundamental art style level this is divorced from the rest of the archetype which used to be clear and good and well designed so yeah in the end this is also a 2 out of 10 it's blurry boring bad art which matches nothing else in the rest of the archetype Ally of Justice Nullifier once again ties together a name, in effect, fairly well, while having some disappointing art. The effect and name work well together, the turning off of effects meaning that it nullifies them, which of course makes sense. The design is disappointing though it lacks any real spikes, and the change in color scheme means that this lacks a lot of the goodness that the first few cards had. And it's not just on theme, and the design is unfortunately human in its look, if that makes any sense. Like, it looks like something designed by humans, not by the, the collection of tribes that make up the world in Dual Terminal. The rest of the cards look sleek and alien and like used things from Ally Mind, which is a card just coming up later, which was an alien in origin. But this one looks so unfortunately human, so unfortunately bad, that yeah, it gets a 3 out of 10. Ally of Justice Reverse Break isn't terrible, but it's not really good either. The effect and name kind of work at breaking a card in reverse or defense position, but the condition to make it unable to exist when a fade up, face up light monster is on the field is asinine in the highest degree. It, one, makes it nearly unplayable, which usually isn't the purview of this, but I thought I'd mention it because it's so uniquely bad. Along with that not really working as a worm fighting machine, the art, once again, is disappointingly blurry, lacking the clean lines of the other cards, and it looks more like fan art of a Yu-Gi-Oh card rather than an actual card. It also doesn't match thematically with a lot of the rest of the cards being green and gray, which while in this case it actually does work fairly well together, doesn't match with the rest of the archetype. It gets a 2 out of 10. This card is... bad. Yeah, Ally of Justice Quarantine turned out to be worse somehow. This card is... just... awful. Its design is weak, with the monster seeming to hold a patch of, of darkness in its little holder, which makes no sense, because this is supposed to interdict the summoning of light monsters. The background is super blobby and low quality and just awful looking, not even contrasting or complementing the card's colors. And the effect only really matches the name when you consider it a preemptive quarantine, rather than helping to quarantine light monsters on the field. This card is a 1 out of 10. This is bad on all accounts, really. The background especially for this one is just bafflingly terrible. It, it looks like something from a card you get from like 2006. Yeah, Ally of Justice Thousand Arms is somehow even worse. It has no thematic connection to the rest of the art, it being a, a dark monster that actually looks like a generic Yu-Gi-Oh monster from the early 2000s. It looks terrible, it's the blurry, awful background, barely distracts from the completely incongruous design with the dumb-looking weapons and shoddy construction, making it look completely out of place from the sleek and spiky designs from earlier Monster. I mean, how are these two cards in the same archetype? It makes no sense. This card should look alien and imposing and good rather than this weird mishmash of demon-like designs, which just doesn't work. This is terrible, and it gets a 2 out of 10, actually, if only for the brief link between the battle-oriented effect, design, and name. It's the only redeeming property of this card, and it is so thin. If I could give this card a 1 out of 10, I would, but I wouldn't feel intellectually honest if I did so. So, 2 out of 10. Yeah, Ally of Justice Rudra also looks bad. This card is named after a Hindu deity of wind and storms, and, and my gosh is it underwhelming with that name by the way. The effect is barely worth looking at, being an attack boosting an effect similar to Gardaholgs, which doesn't inspire much in the way of good design, and doesn't match with much from the name. At the very least it's aesthetically similar to Gardahol, given that it's boring and blobby and blurry. 
this card also lacks any real design influence or theme, just being a weird dragon looking thing without any real design into it. The reason why it's so hard to tell what it is though is through the terrible visual effects that just blur the card all to hell. The weird placement of them as well just makes the card look terrible, obscuring elements which might have added up to a cool design behind this terrible light green and white gunk. This card looks bad with the white of the main monster looking terrible next to the purple, everything so washed out and light, it gets a 1 out of 10. This is a terrible, terrible card with no redeeming value. In times like these, I honestly am kind of happy that Yu-Gi-Oh cards don't have artists on them, because if I could figure out which artist drew this, I would do terrible, terrible things to the person who drew this, and more terrible things to the people who approved it. Ally Mind is their first level 5 monster, and it's actually pretty interesting. It is a normal monster with some really good flavor text, but its design is unfortunately quite disappointing. Though I don't begrudge it too much considering that this is meant to go inside a lot of other worm monsters and be covered up by plating outside of it. This card is, according to its lore, a high performance unit developed to enhance the artificial intelligence program of the Allies of Justice. Loaded with elements collected from a meteor found in the Worm Nebula, it allows for highly tuned performance, which is an allusion to its status as a tuner, but its full capacity is not yet determined, which probably alludes to the fact that this is used to tune up and get access to a lot of their other monsters, which do feature this card. I actually quite like this one. Its design looks good. It looks like this weird autonomous CPU with its little uh, eye in the middle being highlighted by the red and the gold stripes. It's not bad, and honestly, this one is one of the few good cards in the archetype, so it gets a 6 out of 10. It is above average, with a decent enough design, showing off its very mechanical and CPU-like nature, with all the spikes and probes and electricity crackling everywhere, with the wires and exposed. It, it looks like it's meant to go in stuff. Its flavor text is good and explains its presence in a lot of the other cards, and generally it's a pretty nice card. Ally of Justice Omni Weapon, though, is... Not exactly great. It does lack color theming with the rest of the archetype, but its overall design and aesthetic are similar, which is a benefit, however small. However, the weapons that it does show off are really dumb, and this thing honestly looks more like a terrible version of the Die Gurren than anything else, especially with that dumb drill. Honestly, it does look comical, with the weapons looking like something out of a Tom and Jerry cartoon rather than part of a machine race meant for fighting off aliens that would wipe out the entire planet. The effect is also quite lackluster, the attack-oriented effect working, but the special summoning features seeming out of place. I am just honestly tired of seeing these pretty bad cards, and honestly, I just I would like for the next card I review to be good. In any case, this card does get a 3 out of 10. It doesn't match with the color scheme of the other cards, but its aesthetics and design are similar in the effect, while not great, matches at least decently enough. Ugh. Oh, yes. Please, finally, a good card. Ally of Justice Cataster is really, really nice. It's clean but alien looking gold and white blend together so well with hints of red and black, helping to break up the car and not make it seem too washed out or dichromatic. And it looks alien with a strange faceplate with an ally mind in it and the spindly legs that make it seem super strange. It's clean and well designed and the destruction effect is really nice, showing off Cataster's status as one of the most effective monsters of the Ally of Justice, especially in the lore in which this was a mainstay monster. The background is really nice, showing off this awesome cosmic background that's a joy to look at. This card gets an 8 out of 10. It's a really good and well-designed card, which matches so well the effect, name, and design of what this archetype should look like. It is the potential that the rest of this archetype just squandered. On the one hand, I understand that Ally of Justice Clausalus is an Ally of Justice version of Mist Valley Clausalus. But on the other hand, could they have done any work at all to make it look intimidating or alien like it bloody should have? Who okayed this design? Did anyone have a theme meeting beforehand to try and figure out the aesthetic of this archetype? If they were trying to go with a system by which each tribe that made these cards should have had uh, certain dominant colors in the monsters to express their own individual flair as part of the in-lore design committees, why didn't they color code them more specifically? I'll tell you why. Because the people who wrote the early dual terminal lore didn't think about the, how the card should broadly look for function, just that they existed as a place within the story. 
In any case, this card is trash automatically and should feel bad. The one really cool thing, which actually elevates this to a 3 out of 10 instead of like a 1, is the fact that its name is a derivation of a sword mentioned in its flavor text, which is a supposed sword of light. In any case, it's got a boring background, weird and off-putting design, and a really excellent bit of flavor text, which means that this card gets a 3 out of 10. Well, ain't this a surprise. It's another card with decent artwork, but a woefully unrelated to their card theme while also being kind of terrible. It's Ally of Justice Enemy Catcher, a tentacle rape joke so obvious that I'm just gonna tell you what an obvious joke it is, so I look like I'm doing it ironically. Anyway, Japanese Schoolgirl's Delight over here is a pretty nice card if you ignore the Ally of Justice tag in the title, which you can't because that's the only way the effect makes any sense. What a wonderful world we live in. In any case, the art's good, but not in with theme, and it doesn't make any real attempt to match with it anyway. The design is too bulbous and organic, with a real lack of machine parts barring the spikes that replace the squid's normal beak. The effect makes sense in theme, hitting flip effect monsters pretty hard, and the name matches well, considering that this seems to be designed at the point in the lore where Ally of Justice cards were capturing worms rather than killing them. It is disappointing though, but it gets a 3 out of 10, the lore links in the effect and name, saving it from a 1 or a 2, which it would normally get for being so terrible. Why is this next card furniture? Siri, Al Ally of Justice Cosmic Gateway is just what it says on the tin. It's a cosmic gateway. This is a continuous spell, guys. I mean, honestly, make this a continuous spell, and it fits much better than as a monster card. Because this isn't a monster. It isn't even alive. It has nothing which would make me think that this should be a monster card. This is just strange overall. The art itself is fine, with a swirling vortex in the center with lightning emanating from it. it it's good. The card has a decent color scheme with a contrast to the gray, and gold, and the blue pale light on the sides. It looks decent enough and it seems to be matching decently with the aesthetic. It just should have had a green border rather than an orange one. It gets a 4 out of 10. This honestly is too strange to grade normally, but this card should have been a spell. It was meant to be a spell, and I'm honestly not sure that someone didn't mess up and make this a monster when it should have been a spell. Well, thank fuck we're at least back to some sort of theme with Ally Justice Light Gazer. It's got Ally Mind in it, which is a nice little touch, and it doesn't perfectly fit with the aesthetic, though it lacks the sleekness of other good Ally of Justice cards, with this one being much more rounded in design. Instead of the sleek alien design, it goes for much more bulbous design, reminiscent of certain Japanese aesthetics. I'm not a big fan, but the color scheme is at least correct, and it lifts it up a bit more. I'm not really sure why this is called Light Gazer, though. The effect and name really don't fit with the overall conception of Ally of Justice monsters as people who fight light. This one's seeming to be much more using it than anything else. That may be a case of turning the worm's power against it, as this seems to draw power from light in the grave. It's somewhat different and lacks real continuity in theme, along with having a strange name and art design considering the purpose of these cards and fighting the worms. In any case, this card gets a 4 out of 10. It's better than nothing, but it is disappointing regardless. The next card is Ally of Justice Thunder Armor and is once again really weird. I have no idea why this one's red again, and the less of an idea why it has this big sloppy red X over the chest. It's an interesting idea, at least, with wings and the twin fusion sword looking things, but it just doesn't match with the damn theme of the archetype. It looks too mechanical, too industrial, and the legs are exposed and have feet rather than these spindly alien things. In any case, this card gets another 2 out of 10 for being bafflingly out of theme with the archetype as it should be. Ally of Justice Field Marshal is quite interesting though, not in a bad way, but it is interesting. The design is good, it's an Ally of Justice looking design with a sleek white and gold with black elements helping it to stand out, it's smooth with spikes that jut out at certain points, and overall it's a really nice card. The background is lovely, the card standing out against the night sky as it sweeps across the battlefield, the moon in the corner casts some lovely light over the card, and the viewpoint we're placed at makes it seem imposing and above it all. It matches up well with the name, the card looming over us matching with a lot lofty rank he would hold in the army if this was an actual army. The effect is somewhat underwhelming though, the card uh, draw effect is nice, but I would have preferred a monster swarming effect to mimic his command over an army. The art is good though, and quite nice. The effect works well together and the background is simply superb, so it gets a 7 out of 10. Ally of Justice Decisive Armor is their final card. 
It's an insensical name, an interesting design collide by a lack of coherence with a the theme and color scheme, and it doesn't really have a reason to be a different color. And while it is striking, it doesn't match along with not having a reason to not match. The design is there, the sleek spikes and hovering, bulky design with the three cannons all look very ally of justice. The background is excellent again, but the skies are covered with stars and the ground around him contrasts super well. The three cannons can match very well with the effect, and I do like how powerful this card is. Being a level 10 synchro, it does reward you for it. Once again, ally mind shows up in this card, and it's a nice little callback. In the end, this card does get a 4 out of 10. It keeps Ally of Justice design themes and has some really excellent effects while not having a similar color scheme, which is unfortunate, but is at least is not the worst card in the archetype. And that's it! Ally of Justice are a bad archetype for a lot of reasons. The, the primary one being that they don't have a coherent design philosophy behind them. Their effects all match really well. They are obviously part of the same archetype if you just looked at what they aim to do, but art-wise, they're so scattered and incoherent with some cards being green and a bunch of them being red and others being like white and purple. But the predominant design element that makes these cards good is when they go back to that spindly white and gold design, which is just really interesting and alien in its aesthetic. That's what these cards should have been, and I'm honestly angry that there wasn't more put into this archetype, that its potential wasn't explored even more, and that this these cards in general weren't explored to the fullest extent that they should have been, that they weren't given the attention that they needed to become an archetype that looked good. My score for this archetype is a 2 out of 10. It is very, very much below par. This is not a good archetype. Artistically, this card, these cards in general are disappointments, and I wish that they could have been done better. That being said, my overall card of the archetype has to be Ally of Justice Catastrophe. This represents everything the cards should have been. This represents everything that the cards could have been to be excellent and good and interesting visually. While the effect I would have preferred to maybe also have a thing that tied it in more closely with how it fought worms, I will admit the generic effect is probably what allowed it to be even played, while the rest of the archetype was just forgotten in the dustbin of history. In any case, this card has been disappointing. Next time, I should be doing something more, but also, I'm thinking of starting up a second segment to go along with this series. Not necessarily related to card art, but more to the series as a whole, especially the, the anime, which I've enjoyed for a very long time now, though I haven't really kept up with frames as much. In any case, let me know what you think about that in the comments below. It'll probably be more of a theory discussion and brainstorming. I do enjoy thinking about how the Yu-Gi-Oh! world works, but in any case, thank you all very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get updates on all my future videos. So without further ado, this is Nuke, signing out. Oh yeah, don't be too surprised about this, it's honestly not worth it, this thing is A, pretty badly made, and B, I actually do need these to see, so, yeah. In any case, look forward to a new segment coming soon. Probably gonna be like a mid-month thing while the full episodes end up at the end of the month. See you then.